Okay, go ahead and say what you were going to say. Yes, please. Could I have my drink? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to this Monday edition of Wake and Bake News. I have to look number 19, it looks like. Wow, I've been doing a lot of these now. I'm getting practiced. I'm getting practiced. Okay, so I have the Wake and Bake mug here ready, which a gentleman who was watching my channel liked and asked about. I really think this is like the exact same as the Cabela's mug because the Cabela's mug has the same shape, right? And the really cool thing about this mug is it, there's a screw right here. So you could take it apart, you take the screw out, there's a piece of metal welded to the mug, and that way you can take the handle and the mouthpiece off and wash it, you know? So I, this is a really cool mug. It's a little pricey from what I, at least in my opinion, on Cabela's, so it's like 20 bucks. Thank you. I love you. And I juiced us some marijuana leaves and pineapple and carrot and celery and apple and char and Swiss char. Mm. Oh, it smells really good. Oh, yeah. How do I describe that? Bright. It's bright carroty, but not too carroty. And then green tasting and then like a lettuce feeling on your tongue. I don't taste the marijuana. The pineapple and stuff just overpowers it. So why juice? Why juice vegetables? Well, because like I said, this is like quarter of a pineapple, a whole apple, a whole carrot, a whole piece of celery, a couple of pieces of char, um, some Swiss char, and some marijuana leaves. That would be a big salad right in front of me. <coughs> you would have to sit there, ar, 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 using your jaw to process that food and get it in your tummy. And then your tummy would have to process all of that material. <laughs> you know, so juicing is easier on your stomach. Believe it or not, you're making your stomach work less hard and giving it a chance to heal from all the other things you ate that wasn't easy to digest, like gummy bears or whatever, and I don't know, <laughs> and your stomach's upset. So juicing is good for you because it gives your stomach a chance to heal and still get nutrients. Plus, it's like make your own V8 juice, whatever you want. Mm. And you'll find out some things are harder to juice than others if you do it. Okay. I got a couple of subjects I wanted to go into today. Last night on Hash Church, yesterday on Hash Church, uh, 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 Bubble Man mentioned that one of the growers that he was talking to liked to microwave his weed. I just caught it because, you know, I'm doing other things and looking at the internet and stuff and listening to their show. And I just caught the mention where he says, I love how you're so wanting to try your buds that you'll just pick them off the microwave it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I have something to say about that. The first ever time I heard of the technique of microwaving your buds because you didn't want to wait for them to dry, I was like, what? That sounds like sacrilege. It's a horrible idea. I, it won't get you high then, right? You ruin it. And, um, I knew this guy from Santa Barbara who was going to college there in the 80s. And he was one of these, you know, going to work for a Fortune 500 company. Back. Wonder how that all turned out. <laughs> anyway, so like uh, he would grow. And, and I'm not sure how good a grower he was, but he claimed to be a good grower. I never actually saw his grow. Um, and he brought me some buds one time, some little scraggle buds. And he, you know, they were wet. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? And he goes, oh, just toss them in the microwave. And I was like, oh, horrified. What? Toss them in the microwave, you know? And then that's when I said, well, wouldn't that ruin the buds? He's like, no, <laughs> it's not going to taste great. But, you know, it's not going to have the same kind of flavor and stuff if you cured it properly. So uh, I microwaved the buds and it worked. And I was real happy. And so, yeah, I have had experience microwaving leaves and buds just for a quick bowl. 
you know, when in a pinch and it's worked. So what I did was I went out to my garden this morning and I took some of the, the scraggle bud, right, which is just the stuff at the base and I microwaved it so you, you can see what it looks like. So it starts out real healthy looking. It doesn't have a smell. It starts out real healthy looking and it looks all sugary and you're like, ooh, this might be a good size butt. And then you microwave it down and you find out now. And this is like a minute, one minute, okay? We'll stuff this sucker, leaves and all in my pipe. And it's not completely dried out like paper, close enough. Burns fine. I've microwaved buds many times in the bench, especially in the 80s, 90s, and <coughs> come across a plant, take it home. <laughs> yep. You think it's marijuana or it's a boy or something? I've never actually come across a female plant. I've heard stories, but as a kid, and I used to look, boy, I used to be looking in the woods and everything. We would drive across this country. And I would be licking in cornfields. My eyes would be scanning for marijuana. I was always looking for those plants. See? Works fine. <laughs> <coughs> Not the greatest thing in the whole, whole world to be smoking on. But in a pinch, you know, I still got some of my very little, you know, smart OG left. The non-focusing camera action. It's like the biggest bud right now I got. <laughs> we had a really nice weekend. We went out to the woods and went hiking. And oh my God, you know how happy that makes me. My husband, I could just tear it in him, too. He was having such a good time. And plus, being with the boys was really nice because we've had a, a wonderful, like, two or three years of hiking and learning how to, you know, uh, prepare for backpacking trips and backpacking and camping and buying gear and, you know, learning about cooking outdoors and little stuff survival techniques in case we get lost and how not to get lost and how to make sure you have enough water and blah 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 all these things so now to have the boys my my son and his friend sean say hey yeah we we're bored we'd like to come camping it's like finally you're bored finally you put the controller down you're ready to come with us i have you now <laughs> so it's like really makes me happy i'm very excited we're trying to go on a trip like um, in July, I believe, with my brother. So we're, it's like trying to get everybody's schedule freaking together is hard, you know. It was my fake birdies singing. So I loaded this bowl. I haven't gotten to the news yet. Let's do that. There, of course, isn't much in the way of marijuana head. Headlines, but never fear, I have something interesting to point out about a couple of stories that ran last week and how they actually go together. Put up that old monitor capture. Get that monitor capture up there. I'm very disorganized about my computer. I can't find things if I'm not disorganized. If I'm organized, it's gone. <laughs> I'll never find it again. I've organized it to a place where it will never return. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, birdies. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's get to the beginning. Let's just go. Here we go. The one I put up last night for this, the first one. Feinstein very slow to ease opposition to medical marijuana. Big surprise, Diane Feinstein, the old drug warrior. Yes, she comes from an age, my mom's and my dad's time period. 
And uh, she comes from an age when politicians had to say they were tough on crime. And how do you get untough on crime when you spent so much time saying how tough you were on crime? So it's like a double-edged sword for them because look at this woman. Don't you think it was kind of hard for her to prove she was tough on crime? And now she's achieved that goal. Now she's got to prove that she can change. <laughs> You got to give politicians a little bit of leeway to back out of the bullshit mountain that they've created for themselves. You know, it, it's not going to do anybody any good to be trapped on bullshit mountain. Oh, it looks like we got some kind of sign in. They gave me more story on this. An incredibly stupid website. <laughs> When push came to shove in the Senate Appropriations Committee, Feinstein voted no, the only Democrat to do so on legislation to prevent federal interference with medical marijuana laws in states such as California, whose vote attached to his spending bill cleared the committee on a 21-9 vote Thursday and appears likely to become law, extending, extending by a year the restrictions Congress first enacted in December. What's more, she argued allowing states to enforce their own laws without federal enforcement would probably discourage research because you won't be able to go against a state that has implemented its marijuana laws and has its own rules. Federal in intervention is appropriate, Feinstein said. Unless a state has a strong regulatory system in place, uh, Mike Lewinsky, Governor uh, of Affairs Director uh, for America and Safe Access, said, Senator Feinstein is in the middle of an evolution on marijuana, medical marijuana, but she clearly uh, closer. She's clearly closer to the beginning than the end. A similar in. Uh, initiative, excuse me, in 2010 fell short uh, with 46% support. Marijuana use has been le legalized in four other states. I'm not, I'm not going to read the rest because it's just going to go into all, all this other stuff. Basically, she defended the, 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 the rig system that we have here in California. There's a reason why they did not want to regulate dispensaries for so long. Because if they didn't regulate them, it was, you know, they were avoiding problems, right? But the other issue is that they had growers in the north that are making a lot of money with the system as it is now. They like it. They think they would like it to stay this way <laughs> forever and not have legal because if things get more regulated, there's a chance in their right that a uh, bigger corporations, like people are saying tobacco, and that's ridiculous. Tobacco is not going to cannibalize their business with e-cigarettes or with, you know, there's like, there was like a Teens React about cigarette smoking ads from the past this weekend that came up, and of course they had to dip into, don't you think that e-cigarettes and marijuana are like this, blah, 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 and the kids, you know, kids perform. If you put a kid on camera and you're paying him to show up on your show, you're, that kid's going to say what the hell you want him to say. I'm sorry. That's the reaction you're going to get. I worked in the school system for 25 years. I've seen kids turn it off and on like a faucet. They're lying to you. You've taught them to lie. Well done. Good for you. I'm not saying those kids are lying to you. But that kind of reaction is, is, is expected, isn't it? And if they said something else, wouldn't the questions begin? Well, well don't you think that, well, wouldn't you? Don't you think kids have been through this enough with adults in school? They're not dumb. They know how to play this game. They learn very early. Hmm. Anyway, same idea. Uh, t tobacco companies are not going to cannibalize their, their, their business with little paper cigarettes and little pieces of foam that cost nothing for a battery and metal parts that come from China and now they're going to be beholden to China. They're not going to start their own e-cigarette factories. They don't make batteries. They are not a battery manufacturer. That's the only two things you have to put together in your brain to figure out cigarette companies are not behind e-cigarettes. Cigarette companies don't make batteries. Why would a company 
that made paper cigarettes with foam for so long suddenly want to make batteries. I mean, use your brain here. Stop listening to this bullshit propaganda and use the intelligence God gave you. God, they think, like, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> Sure, no, you can you can get some of the stupid people to believe it, but not me. Okay, so the North growers were afraid that large tobacco companies or large corporations like that will move in, and they are. They're beginning to uh, position themselves, not just here, but in Canada. Uh, big co companies are starting to dip in. We need them. I mean, I hate to say it, but we need them. We need to fight them. We need to go through that process. We know it's coming. We know it's an attraction. But that's how you do this. <laughs> and probably when that fight is long over with, the regulatory system will be a jumbled, disastrous piece of junk that we will have to once again untangle. But that's what this process is. There is no magic bullet. Okay. Diane Feinstein <clears throat> is part of the old guard that used the mess that medical marijuana was for the last, like, I don't know, since it, like, since the 96, when we first enacted, I think it was 96, okay, they've been using that to make excuses to try to keep it, you know, down, to make it look bad, to say it wasn't, you know, uh, um, to be taken seriously. And she's part of that movement. This has been a strategy of theirs for years in California. You know, it's like, there's things they say on the news, and then there's what's really going on. So, <laughs> And we're going to see more of that later on in my report. This is just the beginning. Diane Feinstein, Jerry Brown, and some of these other clowns up there, and these individual cities along the California coast are not to be taken lightly. They know what they're doing. They're tricksy little people. They're trying to just make a little kingdom castle for themselves in this mess, and it's, it's only to benefit them. That's why you got to make a problem for them is because it's if it was, you know, something that was more fair and reasonable, then you wouldn't have to go and get up in their face. But they're not going to be fair and reasonable people, so you're going to have to go and move the furniture around a little bit with them. You're going to have some furniture moving around here with Diane Feinstein pretty soon. She don't change her ways. She better start packing her bags. Feel a comet lander reestablishes contact with her. Ah! Sounds of evil! Sounds of evil! Make, oh my god, make your evil! Leave this earth! Oh my god, leave this earth! It's behind me, Satan! <laughs> it's you behind me, Satan! Oh god, I hate advertising. Ugh! You know, in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it says a cybernetics corporation had an advertising company or something like that, or the, the public relations that came up with the the uh, sayings for, you know, that sold these cybernetic robots that were supposed to be wonderful for your home and the perfect companion for your children, but turned out to be miserable and, and sad and <laughs> depressing to be around. And they said in the Hitchhiker's Guide that... Uh, that the, the executives of the Cybernetics Corporation or whatever would be the first lined up against the wall if the revolution ever came. And then later it says they were the first lined up against the wall when the revolution came. <laughs> I have a feeling there's a whole bunch of advertisers out there better think about that. We'd love to get our hands around your neck. <laughs> Figuratively speaking. Same thing for those people that invented, whoever invented the stickers they just put on CDs so you can open CDs. I'd like to freaking wring that guy's neck. Stop the light. Person who invented that. <laughs> Stop light cameras. <laughs> the Philae Comet Lander has phoned home for the first time following a seven month hibernation on the Comet 67P sending valuable data back to scientists on Earth. The solar-powered lander 
lost contact with Earth on November 15th, 60 hours after it landed on the speeding comet, uh, bounced and came to a final rest placed in a shady area lacking the necessary sunlight to keep the lander alive. The European Space Agency had anticipated a day when Philae would have enough power to wake up and communicate with Earth. A communication, excuse me, a unit on Rosetta, the spacecraft orbiting the comet, was turn, turned on in March to listen for signs of life from the lander. Three months later, the first action from Philae, which is about the size of a washing machine, came as an 85 second transmission sent to Earth. I'm sorry, you just made pictures of like old fashioned washing machines in my head <laughs> doing that stuff. <laughs> See my granny out there putting it through the ringer. <laughs> <laughs> washing machine, that's funny. Philae is doing very well. The lander is ready for operations. Uh, Stephen Olmec. Uh, the FILE project manager of the European Space Agency said in a statement, Some of the status data sent back to Earth indicates FILE may have been awake earlier, he said. While scientists have the initial data sent by FILE over the weekend, they're now waiting the lander's next contact with Earth. The lander has more than 8,000 data packets in its memory, according to the European Space Agency. That information is expected to hold insight into the life, in, into what life has been like for the lander over the past few days. The, while Philae slept, the Rosetta probe was con, has continued to orbit the 2.5 mile wide comet collecting data and making observations to send back to the team on Earth. As the comet speeds closer to the sun, Philae made history on November 12th when it landed on the speeding comet, marking the uh, culmination of 10 years, a 4 billion miles journey to the, to the comet. You know, I'm having this emotion right here at the end. Here's my emotion. I don't want it to be robots that goes there first. I'm kind of a little kid about this. I think it should be humans, but wow, look at what the robot can do. The humans can't, and we can get information. And we're proud of that, that robot, as though it was a human doing it, you know? Okay, so I guess that's how we're going to start getting affection for these robots is when they're like heroes like this, huh? You can actually see uh, photos and stuff taken by Philae. I believe you can follow uh, the lander on um, the Rosetta lander on Twitter, and and because I do, <laughs> and it'll send out you know little pictures and say, "Oh, here I am," and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just kind of a weird feeling to be proud of a robot. <laughs> We're so proud of this landing washing machine that landed on this satellite. I really, there's something deep down inside that wants it to be a person that's there that walks around and I see they're a person. But I remember, I mean, that's amazing about this lander, that it didn't fly off, that it was able to wake up and still communicate with us. And it'll probably be on this asteroid for who knows how long from this point on and how much data it could spit out over that period of time. So it's just really amazing. But it does make feelings like, I have no patience with technology. What if I have to be nice to technology? I mean, I think I'll be done then. <laughs> I'm sorry, technology. Did I hurt your feelings? <laughs> be more patient with this computer. It's new. <laughs> It's feelings. I just, wow, it just makes weird feelings in me. I want it to be human. It's good to think there's humans behind it, but we're not there. We're not standing on that asteroid. There's no human person doing that saying, then this is how I feel. You know? Of course, we don't want that. 
that would be inappropriate. But now I'm thinking of Mars and I'm like, is it going to be years and years and years of watching robots terraform or whatever Mars or pre prepare a base for humans? Hey, that'll be interesting. I, this is just like a lot of interesting thoughts it makes in my head. <laughs> Gunmaker Colt fights for s survival as it files for bankruptcy. My husband and I are like, what? <laughs> company that revolutionized the revolver, and I mean revolutionized the revolver, announces a restructuring plan as it battles declining demand and struggles under debt burden. My dad used to collect old Colts like this, see? Navy Colt, right? And he had three or four of them, and one of them he had on the barrel right there, there was an engraving of ship out. And I used to play with those Colts, and he built them. You know, they weren't like, they were a kit. He'd send away for a kit. And he blew the steel. I watched him do all that kind of stuff. Guns are dangerous. <laughs> Guns are meant to kill people. And this is not a society maybe where this is appropriate. But, you know, see that little girl? She's steadying his hand. She was part of that world. She was going out there adventuring. That was some child abuse. She was taking care of her business, you know. It's just, it, it's from a different time. Maybe it's Kodak. I'm about to read to find out, but I'm thinking, wow, that's heavy. Maybe, and it should be, probably. Iconic U.S. gun manufacturer Colt uh, Defense has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy as it struggles with a failing sales and a heavy debt pile. The company which famously produced the Peacemaker Revolver no, known as the gun that won the West, uh, announced a restru restructuring that will see its assets and debt taken on by private equity group since capital management, its current owner. Entering Chapter 11 gives the company breathing space to try to find a way to continue and the sale of since will allow the business to continue to operate. Uh, however, Colt bondholders could take a hit on the scheme. Earlier this month, the company failed to win their backing for a deal that would have issued 45,000 worth of new shares in the business for every 100,000 in outstanding bonds they had in the gun, make, in, in the gun maker. The plan will allow Colt to restructure its balance sheet while meeting all of its obligations to customers, vendors, suppliers, and employees, and providing a maximum uh, continu continuity to the company's current and future business operations, said Keith Mayer, restricting uh, officer, restructuring officer at Colt, restricting. While entering chapter 11, protection in the absence of a uh, consensual agreement <laughs> with our note holders was not what our preference and we do not take it lightly. We are confident it will enable us to continue to gain traction on a challenging but achievable turnaround in our business performance and uh, competitive positioning in the international U.S. government and consumers market. Not unless you're going to make principal guns, dude. <laughs> Sooner or later, the gun's going to get out innovated. It's just going to happen. And it's going to be, it'll be obvious. One day, the little projectile comes out this tube, will be thwarted. We will figure out something that will just thwart it. And then it'll be like, it'll be something that we could have probably done the whole time we just didn't think of. It's usually the But that's interesting that Colt's going to chapter 11. Wow. <laughs> that's like hearing that Kodak was closing. Like, wow. That's a sign. That's a sign. Now, I grew up with uh, my dad collecting guns. And he always talked about how ridiculous it was to have gun restrictions. And even though, you know, they would restrict... Uh, uh, assault rifles and stuff and that he never owned any of that junk he was he was more like into the history of guns and stuff 
but you know, he it upset him because he knew just like I do with prohibition, they're just going to find a work around that. You're just creating a big mess. So now when he has to go to the gun show, he's got these guys that are selling stuff that if you put this on the channel, make it automatic and thwart the law, you yeah. know. And he's standing there watching this like, why do we have to do this? It seems like the whole prohibition thing is an exercise of stupidity. It is an attempt for humans to control a situation that is not within their control. When it was, there's like a, dear Lord, give me the strength to handle the things I can, and or no, uh, give me give me the wisdom or something to handle things I can, and the strength to to leave the things I can't handle. Well, that's the majority of the world. <laughs> Here's the things you can handle. And you, and you may not be able to stop a lot of things that happen in this realm. There may be things that happen that are beyond your control. But outside controlling, you're a fool if you think that's what you're doing. Okay. Hot. This is a very funny story. I had to read this because it just sounded hilarious to me. Hot dabbing poses risk of serious burn, study warns. Monday, June 15, 2015, Health Day News. The potentially hazardous form of marijuana use called dabbing is growing in popularity across the United States. Researchers warn <laughs> in dabbing, users inhale through a water pipe, the vapor from dabs of waxy or solid marijuana concentrate, a piece of superheated metal or glass intense, in, intense, in, intensely, <laughs> instantly, excuse me, vaporizes the dab, creating an intense high from a single inhalation. <laughs> Does. It sounds like Graham Stoker or whatever with Dracula. <laughs> and on the cold, dark night, the wolves could be heard in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be kidding. <clears throat> but the dabs are creating, uh, created using highly volatile butane gas and a number of fires explosions and several burns have been linked to the production of this marijuana concentrate the study leads authors John Stogner an assistant professor of what criminology at the University of Northern Carolina in Charlotte it sounds like a super conservative area it sounds like this is totally your job, professor of criminology, and it sounds like you're just trying to make an excuse to keep your job going. But let's continue. <laughs> Given the amount of butane that can build up during this process, these individuals should be worried about any sparks from any source. This is ridiculous. This is like, this is fear mongering. It is most hilarious. Experts also are concerned about the high potency of the dabs, said Heather Senior, Parent Support Network Manager for Parent Partnership of Drug Free Kids. Someone else who wants to keep her job going and probably gets donations. The crystallized resin created by the process can have a THC concentration approaching 80%. The study's authors said THC, the tetrahydrocannabinol, is the chemical compound in marijuana that causes intoxication. <laughs> we know that it is more potent than smoking marijuana. You know, it's just, they say something like, hey, you know what, this stuff's stronger, and they like to use butane. And they heat up a nail, and then you touch it to the nail, and it vaporizes it. They don't say all of that. It's like in the dark, where the wolves could be heard. We need the danger. Look, it's just like the most ridiculous 
not, I mean, this person should be a fiction writer. I mean, they know how to create the atmosphere and everything, you know, and they're, it's very subtle, you know. The landscape, here's the last line. The landscape is drastically changing and parents need to start learning how to have conversations around this with their children. This person who's trying to save their job set. <laughs> Sorry! It's so obvious! This person who wants to save her job said, Parents start to need to start to be worried. And if you're not, we'll make you worried. Knock it off. Jesus. You should hope that your kid only does dabs. You should hope that your kid only smokes weed. I've seen a freaking convulsion from an Oxycontin overdose. You should pray to God that your child only does dabs if that's all they're ever going to try. Don't be stupid. Get on your hands and knees and pray. Dear God, if my child is going to try drugs, please let them only try marijuana. <laughs> I'm serious. I've seen some scary shit. And I've never seen from marijuana. <laughs> Moving on. Canadian company buys Ferndale property for marijuana. Hmm. Canadian companies are beginning to become quite brazen, aren't they? Good for you, Canadian companies. Join us. We will need your expertise. Plus, I mean, why not? I mean, it needs to be like, like freaking, we need competition in order for us, the buyers, to get the best deal. We need competition. I need people, and Canadian weed's good. And psh, I want to see, like, Mexico get their head out of their ass and actually start producing something and be proud of it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> instead of this stupid drug war, derp, derp, derp. When are we going to get the, the first drug war guy or the drug lord dude down there in Mexico that is going to go, okay, you know what? Maybe I could get into politics. Maybe I could be the gangster that turns my business around and makes it legit. Maybe I should think about turning another leaf before I end up in a real prison and in real trouble. I mean, bankers are gangsters. They're just much higher class gangsters. They don't make the drugs. They just laundry the money. <laughs> so it is possible for a criminal to move up so that they become, well, they're still dangerous, but they're not bloody dangerous. You know, they just use others to be bloody dangerous. Canadian company buys Ferndale property for marijuana. Vancouver, British Columbia Company is planning to lease space in a Ferndale business center to license marijuana growers and processors. A Vancouver, British Columbia Company is planning to lease space in Ferndale's business center to license marijuana growers and, and processors. The Billingham Herald reports that Chlormit uh, Technologies bought a 9.7 acre parcel in Ferndale through its Washington State subsidiary, Packhand Industries. The seller was Excelsior <laughs> Mortgage, Mortgage, I'm sorry, Equity Fund. <laughs> Excelsior! <laughs> I can't. I've been, I've been in the comics for so long, I just can't not hear it of Lake uh, Oswego, uh, ORE, Oregon, I'm thinking. Companies, uh, officials say they are entering the medical marijuana security by buying a 100% interest in AAA Heidelberg, a private Ontario company that was in the process of applying for a license in Canada to grow medical marijuana. Ferndale Community Development Director Jory Burnett says zoning allows for 
recreational marijuana growers and processors in that center. No applications has yet been filed with the city. Uh, Clormit also owns Vape Tronics, a Canadian vaporizer and electronic uh, cigarette company. See? It is see, Vape Tronics. Who owns these vaporizers? It is not the tobacco company. They have some vaporizers. They use that part of their company as propaganda to push their propaganda in the schools. You got to remember that they have to pay taxes and stuff to the schools to help with cancer patients, right? Well, in some ways, they get a say. So they get to go in and say, hey, but you're not talking about vaporizers. And the reason why tobacco companies don't like vaporizers is because vaporizers are not regulated. And tobacco is. Tobacco is heavily regulated, and vaporizers are not. So they are threatened by this business model. Plus, you don't have to deal with the carcinogenic effects of the smoking this tobacco with a vaporizer. It's much safer. I've even heard of several doctors saying, oh, yeah, you vaporize, it's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. So I know that they've got this campaign rolling through the kids right now in the educational system, but good luck with that. I'm going to just keep telling the truth over here because I know it's you. I fight real big tobacco. I ain't some soccer mom stupid. I know who the hell you are. Ooh. Vaporizers aren't hurting anybody. Maybe what's in them, that's a different story. But a battery, come on, man. A little coil of wire and a battery. It's a flashlight. I mean, really, if you want to continue to look stupid, continue to talk about vaporizers. I got one somewhere here. But it is a flashlight case. You can. I've got a vaporizer that somebody made, I bought online. Wait. Yeah. This is called. This is called. This one was just made by somebody. They just made it. They made it with like you know stuff at their house. <laughs> yeah. Metal shop. Okay. So what is it? It holds a battery. It's a battery housing that just takes a metal coil that you put whatever the vapor stuff is on. That's it. You can make any flashlight into a vaporizer. Stop listening to these people lie to you. Get a brain. If it has a battery attached to it, I doubt very much the cigarette companies are really in favor of it. Even if they do have some of their own. Who cares? You can make your own. <laughs> you can buy ones that are made. I can't remember what this is called. But these homemade ones you can buy online and stuff. And then you've got like a button, right? And a lock. See, they lock up. They're very fancy. They look like a big cigar. <laughs> the batteries are kind of specialized, so I didn't like that one. But see, batteries, 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 batteries. Tell me why a cigarette company wants to get involved with that. Lies. Bullshit. That's ridiculous. Since when do cigarette companies make batteries? I want to be beholden to a company that does. It's just lies and bullshit. Okay. Colorado High Court rules employees can be fired for smoking pot when they're not at work. Ah. Uh. Yeah, we kind of knew it was going to go corporate. Pot may be legal in Colorado, but you can still be fired for using it. Okay, so basically what the deal is here is that they can, you know, uh, go to a higher court. But what really needs to happen is boycott those companies. If they're in your state and they're not playing ball, punish them. Punish them. Because they're not supporting their community that they're in. So, sure, they have a right to do this. And you have a right to punish them. It's pretty easy. The state Supreme Court ruled 5 to 1 Monday that a medical marijuana a patient who was fired after failing a drug test cannot get his job back. The case was 
being watched closely by employers and pot smokers in states that have legalized medical recreational marijuana. Or recreational marijuana. Colorado became the fourth state in which courts have ruled against medical marijuana patients fired for pot use. Supreme courts in California, Montana, and Washington state have made similar rulings. Well, it's because it's illegal at a federal level. So that's what they can, if they are companies that deal with the federal government, they can say that because it's against the law in the federal government, then we can do this. That's when you start punishing them in the pocketbook. That's when you run campaigns of, oh, look, these SOBs fire people who take medical marijuana. Simple patients, they want to kick them in the nub. See, just say that about them. This company wants to kick that medical marijuana patient in the fucking nub. It's pretty easy. Colorado worker Brandon Coates is a quadriplegic who was fired by Dish Network after failing a drug test in 2010. The company agreed that Coates wasn't high on the job, but said it has a zero tolerance drug policy. Probably that is locked into because it's an insurance company. Somebody else who wants to kick you in the nub, man. It's not really their fault. It's because the federal government. See, we're trying to deal with this at a state level, but there's just so much that the federal government seems to have their fingers in that I just don't see how they can escape responsibility in the end at all. Eventually, they will have to decide whether or not we are going to have legal marijuana in America and not this pussyfooting bullshit around where all the state should decide it. What they're doing is they're trying to buy time so that they can change some things at the UN and uh, begin the process of changing the drug laws internationally. Because if we change it here, we're dealing with other countries that we've made drug treaties with and we're conducting like wars and shit or like, you know, business with our military to fight these drug lords and stuff. We have contracts with them. Those contracts are going to change. That is a very, I can understand their position there. So when you hear Hillary Clinton say, oh, we need more studies, or a Barack Obama, or these guys, or the Supreme Court, or the, the, you know, the House, or any of these guys, what they really fear is their partners internationally. That now they have to come to the table with their tail between their legs and admit they were wrong. And, and the, there's like real chips on the table. There's, there's a real stake here for them. So that's why Barbara Boxer's that way because she's on that security committee thing, you know? They built this whole house of cards. It's collapsing on them and they're trying to desperately find a way out. Now we can all laugh as it collapses on them, but we saw how funny it was after Iraq collapsed and fucking everybody went crazy and started tearing the museums to pieces. That was just hilarious. So you can't let that happen. You got to give these people a place to go, even though they don't deserve it. But if you don't, they'll make trouble. You just got to keep them like this for the rest of their lives. Just like that. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Under my thumb. Shut up. Okay. Very frustrating story. I'm not going to continue to read. Um, I'll just read the statements. There is no exception for marijuana use for medical purposes or for marijuana use uh, conducted in accordance with state law, the court wrote. Coates and his lawyers said after the ruling that the decision at least clarified the matter for workers, although I'm very disappointed today. I hope that my case has brought the issue of the use of medical marijuana and employment to light. Yes, and here's the light, that you cannot allow the states to decide this all by their own selves and then make half-assed little band-aid laws that are going to try to keep the DEA and all the enforcement agencies that we created to work off our backs. You're going to have to be big boys and girls up there in Congress and the White House. You're going to have to pull up your bridges. You're going to have to do the thing that's right. That's what's up. You better be getting on with it, and I mean now, because I got more.
<laughs> We're going to go back to the story about the marijuana bust. Officers busted. Wait a minute. Officers bust marijuana shop caught on camera eating edibles. Okay, now I've been over this story on Thursday and Friday. It still just infuriates me. And it infuriates a lot of law enforcement people too because it makes their job a lot harder. Now they have to work under the shade. They're not in the sun anymore. Now they're in the shade and it's dark. Okay. Police broke the surveillance cameras on a recent drug bust, but they missed one hidden one. Bullshit. Here's what happened. The, uh, I'm going to tell you what's actually going on kind of in Santa Ana. Santa Ana had this lottery to do dispensaries. And apparently the lottery winners were favored by certain officials in the city, right? Had, had a, you know, the lottery was rigged, basically. Okay, so since then, kill that, kill that horrible noise. Oh my god, why is that so making noise? Anyway, so like, uh, oh my concentration. So basically what's been going on is that they, they did a lottery, they gave out uh, some dispensary licenses to people they liked, basically, and then they began to raid and close dispensaries that they didn't like. They couldn't enter the lottery. They couldn't pay. I think you had to pay to get into this lottery. So they're just gatekeeping, gatekeeping, gatekeeping. Here, pay. Come on, I want some of that pound of flesh, too. I want a little piece piece of the action, little piece of the action, right? Okay, so now the way they're getting a piece of the action is they get to raid these places, they get to take all their computer equipment and property and stuff and probably never give it back and sell it because remember all of that is confiscated stuff that'll just never be given back. Remember the police telling that one woman or that, that, or that prosecutor, I can take your stuff and take your stuff and sell it and make money. Take your stuff. Okay, think about what's going on here. These are individual cities that are now preying on dispensaries and medical marijuana patients. They are now using these locality laws, which I'm about to talk about, that we have here in California to vampiristically prey when they feel like, just like they do with the driving and the and the uh, camera tickets and everything else now it's becoming a revenue source okay like it was always a revenue source but now it's like oh, we could suck in some dispensaries kind of give them the idea they're welcome and then bust them and, and eat all their freaking edibles and party in there you know what i mean and the people that are doing this are as crooked as hell i mean you can see they're obviously as crooked as hell okay so i covered this story and that one is blowing up big because apparently there's more video. And the more video is that some of the cops talk about a judge that they partied with that gave the warrant for the search. And apparently when the judge was a DA, a district attorney who, who prosecuted drug crime, this is like a whole thing I'm going to go into now. This is a system. You got to understand it. DAs get into the governor's mansion or like Jerry Brown or someplace else, okay, because they prosecute easy to prosecute drug criminals. You know, nonviolent offenders, got a bunch of marijuana, some like pop guns or something in the house. They take a bunch of pictures, they show a bunch of cops, and this guy gets enters an election and he goes from being a district attorney to now he's, you know, the, you know, the governor or something, or keeps moving up. See what I'm saying? Okay, so that's a rigged system right there. They want to be able to keep that in there, that tough on crime bullshit little ladder of success they got going on there, okay? The other thing they want to do is now, that's part of this rigged system, is they want to draw in these dispensaries and milk them like cattle and pick and choose who they want to raid and what they want to do, you know, like the sheriff in Nottingham, like these cops in Santa Ana. Think about it like that, that uh, Bell, the city of Bell, how crooked their councilmen and stuff were. Think about that. 
And that's the power that you've given to these individual localities. These guys can't be trusted with that. We don't have city states anymore. We don't live in the Renaissance time anymore. We have California in the United States for a reason. We don't let cities just go and make crazy laws so they can victimize their, you know, their um, community. Okay, so California's the latest attempt to regulate medical marijuana advanced uh, off the assembly floor on a 55 vote on Thursday. Now they're trying to push this um, new uh, regulations forward for medical marijuana, which sounds fine. But they kept in the ability for local governments to control the dispensaries so places like Santa Ana can do things like this. See? And they pushed real hard for it. It was like the police organizations and the, the what is it, the, like the, some kind of council of cities or something like that in California really pushed for this amendment to stay in because they want their... They want their blood. They suck off us. They feast. Thank you. This is just another way for them to feast, okay? As an independent, this just infuriates me. I'm not for big government, but I'm not for individual morons being able to take advantage of the situation because you don't want to take, you know, control yourself. And plus, they're obviously up there screaming and yelling and they got people putting money in their pockets to do that. So I want you to just keep this story about California's latest attempt to regulate medical marijuana advancing, okay, in mind when you see that raid with the cops in Santa Ana. Is this a good idea? What did I say? What did this lady on CNN say in that high profit show, that lawyer? She said, you have given the ability to regulate dispensaries to high school, you know, like a, um, um, what do you call it? city council members. Okay. And some of them are freaking crooked. So there it is. I said, it. that's what needs to be said about what needs to happen in California. They need to regulate so that, sure, you can limit, but you can't do all this crooked nonsense that's going on down there in San Diego because those guys, it's just, oh my God, what a horrifying place to live. What a horrifying bunch of police officers. Oh, it just makes me shake to even think about it. It's like, oh, my grandmother used to live there. It was never like that. Those people are insane. That kind of stuff just upsets me. So this is what's been building in my mind. These little connections with these stories. Here we are. The House is making this rule to keep the DEA off of dispensaries and growers back in the states to legalize. And yet now they can still fire you from a job. Guess what, Senate? Ain't going to be enough. You're going to need to get up, put your big boy pants on, and get this job done. Otherwise, I swear. To the moon, Alice, <laughs> which is like a sexist and violent thing to say. I can't believe that freaking the honeymoon is used to be. <laughs> you know, wow, he was so abusive to her. <laughs> <coughs> there, my rant. I've been really kind of putting this together in my head since I heard that police story. I'm like, here's the example why this needs to not happen. Because you're giving these crooks. The, and I'm sorry. You want to know about how crooked California is? Like I said, look at the movie The Two Jakes and Chinatown. And you'll see a kind of crooked weirdness. And even before that, these were all uh, Spanish rancheros. All of these cities were actually made up of what was left of the Spanish ranchero system. And it's fascinating to watch how the parcels were bought off in LA and stuff and who got them and where. You know, it's just, it's creepy. <laughs> the whole place in a little bit of a way politically is, is full on creepy. It's not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood out here, I'll tell you that. They try to make out like California's this healthy, nice, not politically, it's a quagmire politically.
is so big, it will always be some kind of wild, wild west. They'll never be able to keep all the roads up and all that crap. It's just, you know, not the way they do it this way. We went high speed rail. <sighs> Pretty soon we're just going to have strips of concrete and metal all up and down. <laughs> Old concrete metal just left it to die and decay and strips of new concrete metal. That's usually the way it goes. Some of the original strips of concrete have already fallen into the ocean. Okay, so that's my rant over. I was very thinking very hard about this this weekend, and I thought, no, that is just not going to fly with me. That these things go unconnected, like, oh, these are unconnected events. No, they're not. They are definitely, they're leading to a conclusion. And the conclusion is, yeah, it's a nice fantasy to think that the states can do it individually. Guess what? No. The federal government is going to have to get their act together. And we're starting to know why they're not doing it. It's because they got to get their, there's going to be some big meeting with the UN that I'll be talking about when it comes up, where they're going to talk about drug policies. And they better get their act together and fix this because we're doing this here and we're not, we're like champagne and you're shaking the bottle and the lid's on. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Knock it off. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Anti rant. Let's get this thing done. What are we, leaders or what? There's lots of money to be made here. Why am I waiting? Hmm. Lots of good things to be done. Lots of wars to stop. Sorry, military. You just have to figure out something else. Hmm. I think it's getting ready now. Head to the tax meeting. Hmm. All right, so hopefully that was interactive. I know, think about what I said and connecting these stories and seeing the obvious to me. What is the obvious beeline that it's making in responsibility? Buck stops at the desk in the White House, in the Congress. That's where the buck stops. Not here in the States. This is where it begins. That's how the system works. Laws begin here. But they need to get up off there. <laughs> Lawmakers that go, oh no, we shouldn't be making that law. I mean, that's nuts. <laughs> get up off your keister. Let's start making this thing happen. I'm tired of waiting your your oldness is seriously getting on my nerves. Majorly. Majorly. Okay. This is how we'll have to go to this thing for another two weeks after the day. Gosh. I'm just to really, you know, get personal here for a second. It's hard on him to be her caretaker and, you know, show for her around and go for and check on her every day and do her laundry and, you know, pick up after her and, and do these little things that she sits there and thinks up for him to do because she wants to remain, you know, which is reasonable. The, the person in charge and viable, and it's not like we're, we're you know, yeah, it is kind of like we're trying to say we're kind of done with you telling us what to do. But, <laughs> but I mean, besides that, because that's honest, just being a hundred, right? That's how I feel. This is so exhausting, right? Can we just do this and take care of you? But I mean, it'll be my turn, and I, I won't want to go so quietly into that dark night. So I. You know, once I start thinking about that, I'm like, yeah, 
even right now I'm being that person that's not going to go quietly into that dark night. So, so as a human, I have to understand what she's going through. But it's really hard on him. He's got to sit through old people, city. It's making him old. <laughs> that's why we're so glad to get out and hike with the kids. Get out and feel alive again, you know, with, with young people. I mean, gee, many Christmas, we just got into our 50s. It's just beginning now. We're not dead yet. But being in this world of, you know, is really, oh, they're wonderful people. They're fun to talk to. It's exhausting. <laughs> I'll tell you honestly, it's exhausting. It's just exhausting because you're caring for them. That's my family brand. I could just see it in his face. He's like, Mom, gotta go. You know, poor guy. He just needs a back rub, a hug, a martini. I don't know. I just wish I could give him something that would make this all. Again, the day out hiking was good. That's a good start. That's where I need to work on. Is that healthy? Look here, life. It goes on. There is life. <laughs> <laughs> there is life. You know. hmm. It's kind of like how gray this weather is. It's, it's a little bit how, how this whole experience with um, hand, you know, helping his mom is felt. It's gray. Sad. Oh, he's coming back. He forgot something. Anyway, I'm making this raging one. I'm talking about all our personal things here. Oh, you got your papers? <laughs> it's because your brain's not in your body, right? Travel in time and space. Oh, my heart is just ripping. Dealing with this as his wife. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I've just got to make that happy stage. I've just got to be that positive one. I've got to be his support person right now. He needs me because this is difficult, you know. But man, it is. I just like Calgon, take me away. Okay, not yet. Still a long road ahead of us in the caring for the elder person. Okay. And it sounds so much like we don't appreciate it, but it's it's tiring. It does start to make you very like, how do I say positive about this? <laughs> Yeah, I'm keeping it, again, I'm keeping it 100. And I'm a person that tries to stay positive. I'm, I don't see how being negative is logical, but sometimes it just all the thoughts and emotions get wired up inside you and you just feel like you're going to pop. If you, you just need to walk away, take a breath. <laughs> okay, remember she's old. She didn't mean what she said just now. And even if she did, she'll forget it in two seconds. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, she'll pop off with something that upsets people. But mostly it's just the day-to-day -day exhaustion of, of um, just what do we have to do today? Okay, well, first I have to check on my mom, you know, and then I got to go mail some letters for her. And then we're going to go and pay some bills for her. And then we're going to go and check on the apartments and do some work in the washroom and you know th this is these are all things that are um that are really hers you know and that we're doing and, and it's becoming ours she's like a little bit makes it the whole process super difficult you know and we're not anxious but we can't we're stuck it's like we're glad to be here and be on the computer and stuff like that and i am making this way too long but I, but because I'm trying to keep it a hundred here, and and processing my thoughts while I'm telling you and being honest. But it is an exhausting process, and it will really tax you. And if you aren't like somebody who can keep your spirits up and keep trying to look towards positive, and trust me, you're going to veer into the dark side. <laughs> you know, be like, okay, that's it. You know, <laughs> okay. Um, it's very, it's a real stressful situation and we're not like we don't have her in our home i couldn't imagine having her here involved in everything in such a close space that would be even more stressful because she's such a controlling person must touch and grab and 
learning to lean and part and proxemics. If you know what proxemics is, it's a space, a three foot space around your body. Some people like to come into that space and it, they're just fine with it. It's comfortable for them. It doesn't bother them. It's freaking you out, you know? <laughs> Some people don't like to be touched. She's not a toucher, but she is somebody who definitely invades your space and will lock you into a corner. And I think that's mobility problems with her. I think she it doesn't have spatial awareness as much anymore. So like you'll be going down a hallway, she'll follow you, you'll come to a dead end, you'll turn around and you can't leave because she can't. And then you stand there for an awkward moment. <laughs> okay, what, what's happening here? <laughs> it took me a while to figure out what was going on. She couldn't, she had to take a second to figure out to turn around and go back down the hallway. She just kind of, I started to notice also she was following Kurt behind him. Like she was drifting, you know, or not drifting, but was that like a uh, bike rider to follow another bike rider to cut the, the, the uh, friction of the wind. She would be like that. I would see her following Kurt. And I know this is all about what's happening to her brain and her mobility inside of her body. I'm freaking out for her. I'm freaking out for how much stress this is on him. It's just hard to watch, you know. And then I'm here making videos so I can just look, happy time, you know, <laughs> to get away from how deep and emotional this experience is, especially with somebody who was not like your biggest fan through your whole marriage. She and I don't get along real good. And now it's kind of moved. We get along because we just, you know, we're we've always been there now in like 30 years. More than that. Than that, I don't know. Anyway, that's me keeping it 100 about my little moment there. I just, as a female, sense all of his stress because I just, and I know what I'm reading into. I know as a girl, I'm making up stories in my head, and this is not always what's happening in a man's head, but I sense that he needs a break. More opportunities to get out and, and be away from the gray cloudiness of his life and this town right now. Get him into some happy sunshine, pretty trees, out of this dark shade. You know what I mean? It's just really hard to watch, like I said. Okay, so last hit. Regain myself. Hmm. All those thoughts back into Pandora's box. <laughs> Lock and key. There's a way out of this. I mean, it will end. And then we don't know what anything's going to be like. Our experience will completely change again. So it's going to be interesting. But right now, this is just like a, it's Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill. And the boulder feels like it's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> like a snowball, you know. Sisyphus gets a little pissed and annoyed sometimes. It just needs to smoke a bowl and just relax and think. <laughs> and my husband, he doesn't smoke pot, so. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a Virgo. Very control, you know, self-controlled. Doesn't talk a lot to people he doesn't know well. Doesn't always feel comfortable, you know. But once, once you get him talking, he's, he's so funny. You can hear on my camera when I catch him, like in this hike and stuff. He's, I'm going way beyond. It's just so fun to share. It's nice to talk about our problems because it gets it out there. Like, hello, this is what we're going through. Maybe you're experiencing something similar. <laughs> it's okay to be feeling overwhelmed and like you're going to lose your mind, you know, your last nerve. Just forgive yourself and try to do better and understand, you know, try to analyze what you're going through. It's the best thing I can tell you to do. That's what I'm doing to do. And it's really hard. This is a person that will test you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's only because it's so frustrating now. I figure later on I'm going to be thinking about and admiring all the things that I remember that made her tough and 
Oh, see, that gets me all emotional thinking. Ah, uh, this is like a big kind of thing. I am not going to cry on camera. I do not cry. <laughs> this is one thing you know, to find out about me. I don't cry. You see me cry? I'm in trouble. <laughs> I don't cry, man. Not unless it's like a puppy commercial or Lassie Come Home or something. Certain songs make me cry, but I don't cry. I don't like crying. Crying gives you a headache. Crying is useless. Crying is annoying. <laughs> I don't like crying. Happy crying is okay, but still you get a little headache. And I just really don't like that headache. And your eyes are all puffy. I just don't like it, man. Okay, so. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Wikipedia News. And also for kind of all the information about, more information about what's going on with my family. And I do hope that the parts about thinking about all these stories connecting and how they connect and where it's leading, you know, what conclusion this is leading to. And to me, this is leading to saying that this should take place in the States is all well and good, but really where it's going to end up is in Washington and Washington is going to have to decide. And we started the fire, but I mean, it ain't going to end here. So keep telling your story about all this whatever to get yourself elected, but come on, I'm sitting out here and it just kind of tires me out. You don't respect my intelligence. No. Okay, so I'm going to let you go now. That's been an hour and 17 minutes. I hope that you were able to smoke pot with me. <sighs> One more hit. I keep saying that and I will end this. <laughs> oh, that was just so like it's stressful in a lot of ways first the stories were stressful and then worrying about my husband there for a second i think the stress carried over from the stories to worrying about my husband and that kind of intensified because it's really a calm day there's not like a fire happening in our lives or anything thank you god please don't do anything <laughs> There is one. Please don't get any big ideas. <laughs> hmm. and one day there will be an end to the story. You know, this part of our story and a beginning to the next story. And I'm almost worried, you know, what that'll be. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be positive. We have plans to travel. That's what we're thinking. Is we just, um, we're going to want to take a year or something and get away from all of this. And I have a plan to make a travel vlog and everything doing that in my imagination. But uh, so far, nothing has turned out like my imagination is <laughs> in my life. So we'll just see. Maybe my imagination is just there to entertain myself. But one day, we'll be able to get out more and do the stuff we want to do. And we're staying healthy, so we're, we're able to meet that day with the best that we can put forward instead of tired and we ate too much hamburgers because we were sad or something like that. We want to meet that wave at our best, you know, not at our worst, because we know that wave is coming. Okay, so hoping that your wave comes <laughs> and that you are not paddling in the slosh right now. Uh, this is Shampoo VTA, and if you stay high, goodbye.